I told him, I spread truth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall free you. I am a person who spread truth. I wasn't lying. I'm a dai. I'm spreading the haq, the religion of truth. And they asked me various questions to cut the incident short. And I went through the custom, they opened my bag. And they found my video cassette, Jihad and Terrorism. <laughs> they asked me, do you believe in Jihad? I said, yes. Even Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, believed in Jihad. He said, you have to strive. Even I believe in striving. I believe in what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that you have to strive. No, no, I mean, do you believe in fighting? I said, it is mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Exodus, chapter number 22, you have to fight. It's mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Exodus, chapter number 32, you have to fight. In the book of Numbers, chapter number 31, you have to fight. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 22, that take the sword and fight. But then the custom officer being a Christian, no, no, but that's in self-defense. I said, that's what even I fight for, self-defense. <laughs> they told me, sir, can I ask you one more question? I said, no problem. I just told my host that, you know, I'm just doing dawa in the immigration, don't bother. <laughs> I, as a dai, a dai should not get scared of truth. I started my talk by quoting the verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81. When truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood, it's by its nature bound to perish. And Alhamdulillah, after 9 11, everything has become strict, visas have become strict. But Alhamdulillah, I have traveled after 9 11 to USA, to Canada, to UK, to Australia, to Malaysia, to Singapore. And I've got 10 years visa of USA, 5 years visa of UK. Canada, two years visa, alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. Yet, I do not mince my words, I'm very clear. When I go for lectures, I say I've come for lectures. When I go for spreading truth, I say I've come for spreading the truth. Depending upon the situation where you are, Allah says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, ila kalmitin sawa in bayna bayna kum. Come to common terms as in us and you. Many of you may be aware of the situation in India. It's not easy to do dawa, especially the city where I come from, Bombay. One of the most difficult places to do dawa, according to me, it is Bombay. But Allah is the one to protect. There itself I speak. I quote the Vedas, I quote the Bhagavad Gita, I quote the Upanishads. But there, my strategy changes. There are many Indians who say the Muslims are terrorists. This Quran. It propagates that you should fight. What kind of religious book is this? I tell them, have you read your Mahabharat? Mahabharat is one of the sacred scriptures of the Hindus. Your Mahabharat has got more verses of fighting than the Quran. It will put the Quran to shame as far as verses of fighting is concerned. So the Hindu tells me, no, no, no. But this is a fight between truth and falsehood. Haq and batil. I said the same fight is in the Quran also. Oh, then we have no problem with the Quran. And the most commonly read scripture among the Hindu scriptures is Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is nothing but an advice given by Sri Krishna, the god of the Hindus, to Arjun. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter number 1, verse number 43 to 46, that Arjun, in the battlefield, he puts his weapons on the ground and he says, I would prefer being killed unarmed than to fight my cousins. Mahabharat is a fight between the cousins, the Pandavas who are five and the Kauravas who are hundred. And Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharata, 25 chapters. He puts his weapon down, Arjun. Bhagavad Gita chapter number one was 43 to 46. And he says, I would prefer being killed unarmed than fight my cousins. Immediately few verses after, chapter number two, verse number two, Shri Krishna says, Oh Arjun, how could such impure thoughts come in your mind? How could you be so important? God Almighty, Sri Krishna is calling. You will not enter the heavenly planets. You are incurring a sin. And the full Bhagavad Gita is nothing but advice given by Almighty God to Arjun that he should fight his cousins. It's further mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter number 2, verse number 31 to 33. That, oh Arjun, you are a Kshatriya. It is your duty to fight 
on religious grounds. If you do not fight, you will incur sin. If you fight, you will go to the heavenly planet. And blessed are those Kshatriya who get an opportunity to fight. Imagine if I tell the Hindu, your almighty God, Sri Krishna, is forcing Arjun to kill his cousins, it will be devilish. What he's doing, he's telling that if you have to fight for the truth, even if you have to fight against your cousins, you have to fight. That's what the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 135. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Oh, you believe. Stand out for justice as witness to the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself, against your parents, against your relatives, whether rich or poor, Allah protects both. Same thing. And very often, a common hadith is quoted to malign Islam. Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number four, in the book of Jihad, chapter number two. Hadith number 45. And the critics they quote, Your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that if a Mujahid is killed in the battlefield, he will go to heaven. If he comes back alive, he gets the wealth of this world. And even the critics of India, like Arun Shuri, they quote this hadith against Islam. I tell them, haven't you read the Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita says in chapter number 2, verse number 37, Shri Krishna, the god of the Hindu, he is telling Arjun, that, oh Arjun, go and fight. If you are killed, you will go to the heavenly planets, you will go to Swarg, you will go to heaven, to paradise. If you come back alive, you will get the booty of this war. Verbatim translation of Sai Bukhari. Verbatim. I tell these Hindus that haven't you read your own scripture, you want to take out false in the Quran and the Hadith? Based on the guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala ila kalmitin sawa im bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as us and you. So we Muslims should know how to do dawa, how to convey the message. How to turn the tables over. As I told you earlier, I was in UK. And they say about Muslims, oh, suicide bombing, Muslims are killing innocent people. There's a book written by an associate professor in political science in the University of Chicago by the name of Robert Pip. He writes a book by the title, Dying to Win. He's supposed to be one of the best experts in suicide bombing, in suicide terrorism. Number one in USA, Robert Pape. The book is Dying to Win. He writes in his book that suicide bombing was alien to Islam. If you read the history of Islam, the Quran and the Hadith, do you find any suicide bombing there? No. The first people who got involved in suicide bombing were the Tamil Tigers. Later on, it was the Marxist Leninist. And Robert Pape writes that in Iraq, before the Americans came to Iraq, there was no suicide bombing. After the Americans came, then suicide bombing came. Not a Muslim, a non-Muslim, a Christian, an American who's supposed to be an expert on suicide bombing, Robert Pape. And you can give talks on the books written by Americans and non-Muslims. We should know how to convey the message, the message of Haq. In UK, we know they have a problem of IRA. Fine. It is nothing but Catholic terrorism. But do they label it as Catholic terrorism? No. Why? If any Muslim is involved, Islamic terrorism. Non-Muslims are involved, they talk about the region, not about the religion. Why? This is how the media it picks up information and they portray it in the wrong way. The media, for example, if it comes in the Indian media that a 50-year-old Arab company